Okay, now we're going to move. Um, we're still talking about displaced shapes of beams and frames. And we're going to start talking about elastic beam theory. I know everybody loves, oh, theory, but I really think it's good to think about where equations come from and not just be given equations. So we're going to do a little bit of theory, everybody's favorite. So here I have a beam subjected to a simply supported beam subjected to a concentrated load right in the middle. If this is my undeformed shape, right? And then this is my deformed shape, right? What do you notice? Is it negative or positive bending? It's positive bending, right? Because it's happy, it's making a smile. Now I'm going to take, I'm going to pick a point at some distance. Oh, I can't draw a straight line to save my life. At some distance X. I'm going to take out a little chunk. dx, gonna look at it on the deformed shape. I'm gonna look at it deformed and undeformed. You notice it's got some type of rotation right there. Some type of slope going on. Okay, so I'm going to look at those two little chunks. making them extremely wide, <laughs> right? If I look at my undeformed shape and I look at a point DX, right? If I have the center line, Right, there's my center line. And then I pick some point above it. And I'm going to look at those two lines and how they change with deformation. The first line is at the center line. dx. Second line is some distance of 
above the center line. Diaz. And this distance here is Y. Dx at center line of beam section. Ds at distance. Y. Above the center line. Okay, now I'm going to look at the same two lines under the deformed shape. If I look at the center, it deflects like that. And if I look at that line DS, it's going to have a deflected shape like that. Okay. So we're going to assume that dx, this line right here, dx prime, because it's under the deformed shape, dx prime, assume dx equals dx prime as in along the center line the length doesn't change. Your beam is not getting any longer by applying this beam, by applying this load. If you look straight at the center line, it's not getting any longer. However, ds prime, right? ds is in compression. We're in positive bending. We're above the center line. So it's going to be shorter than your original length. If I was below the center line, If I was looking at a line below the center line, it would lengthen, right? Because it was in tension. Above the center line, I'm in compression. Below the center line, I'm in tension. And it would lengthen, but I'm looking at above. All right. We can just maybe just remind ourselves of the moment, right? Got a moment in the bottom half 
is in tension, and the top half is in compression. So, so DS prime shortens because it's in compression. So maybe hard to tell, but this is actually like a little curve, you know, an arc. And if we recall from geometry way back in the day, right? What did the acorn say when it grow, grew up? Geometry. All right, let's talk about geometry from high school. I'm gonna get all my straight edge in here. that scroll all the way up eventually these two will come to a point right somewhere out there <laughs> right out of room eventually they come to a point I could have just drawn them better And the distance from the center line to that point way out there, the center of this arced curve is called rho. It is the like R, right? Rho. It's the radius of curvature. To the center line of the beam. And angle is d theta, right? The angle of that arc is d theta. So let's remember what we know about Geometry. It's an accidental click. What do we remember about geometry? How do I calculate the length of an arc? length of an arc dx is equal to its radius times the angle so the length of ds prime that deflected shape its radius is rho minus y. I'm assuming plane sections remain plane. So that means this stays a straight line. So its radius is rho minus y. But it still has the same angle d theta.
let's keep those in mind, right? That's my arc length dx is equal to my radius. I, guess I could say dx prime, but it's also equal to dx because I'm assuming that my beam is not lengthening. So let's see. Let's look at our strain in arc ds prime. My strain is the difference ds prime minus ds over the original ds. All right, my change in length ds prime minus ds over the original length ds. If I so make some substitutions here. Let's see. ds prime is rho minus y d theta. ds, well, I said earlier ds was equal to dx, right? Maybe I didn't explicitly say it, but let's say it now. Originally, in the undeformed shape, dx is equal to ds, right? You can see how that would happen. <laughs> so that means dx. So if I want to substitute ds, I can use rho d theta. And again, rho d theta. That goes away, that goes away, that goes away. I've got rho plus y minus rho over rho. So these guys go away. And I get negative y over rho. So that's my strain in that arc. We're just collecting things right now. If I remember from Hooke's law, right? So, so far we've said plane sections remain plane. Now we're saying that this only applies to linear elastic materials. Stress equals E times strain. And then if you remember from mechanics of materials, the flexure formula that relates stress to the distance from the center line and the moment and the EI. Wait, no, we have it. just the I. All right, stress is equal to MY over I. You might have seen MC over I, which is just the extreme fibers, right? the whole distance, the height over two. Um, now we're just saying that it linearly varies from the center line up to, I'll just draw that just so we all kind of remember. If that's my center line, if that's my um, beam cross section, Right, if I'm in positive bending, I have compression in the top and tension in the bottom. And let's see, this is my distance y. All right, same as this distance. So because of that, I'm in compression, so I'm going to make my stress equal to negative my, negative my over i. Again, maybe you saw it as, right, like 
Etsy. Um, let me know if you need more than that. I'm going to say my stress is negative. I'll just because yes. My arc that I'm looking at is in compression. So now let's combine these three things, right? I've got that. I've got that Y is going to go down in here. And I'm going to equate it to these two equations for stress. two equations for stress. Stress equals E times strain equals negative M Y over I. I'm going to put strain equal to negative Y over P. Negative Y over P over rho, not P, rho equals negative m y over i and all this to say let's see my two negatives go away right positive positive my y's go away if i move e to the other side i get one over rho is equal to m over ei. And let's see, so one over rho, that's one over my curvature is equal to the moment at that point, right? This would be the moment at that point meaning the resultant of my tension, the resultant of my compression stress, the distance between the two gives me a moment, the moment at that point over EI. Now let's see. What else was I going to look for? Rho equals using this equation. I can solve for rho. Rho equals d theta over, oh, I'm sorry, dx over d theta, right? Yeah. Rho equals dx over d theta. So 1 over rho is d theta over dx. d theta over dx equals m over ei. So that means my change in my slope along the length is equal to my moment, which could be a fun which is the function, right? Along the length could be a function, unless there's a constant moment, could be a function, um, over my elastic modulus times my moment of inertia, right? Let's write that down. Slope along 
the length, right, my change in slope. And slope along the length of the beam is equal to my moment over my elastic modulus times my moment times my uh, moment of inertia which could be a function of X actually any of them could be a function of X right What if my, I have a varying cross section, my moment of inertia would change along the length. My elastic modulus could change along the length. I'm most of them, I have a, an aluminum piece in the middle of my steel beam. I don't know. So my change in slope along the length of my beam is equal to my moment over EI. EI, EI, uh oh. Now, if I want to take um, Now, if I want to use that to find my, um, I want to use this equation to find the equation for my deflected shape, the curve, my elastic curve. So let's say I want to express my curvature, which is one over my radius of curvature in terms of x my distance along the length and Is it new? Is it just, I'm gonna say new, I guess. Or V, right? It's my, my what I'm using for my deflection. If you go to calculus, this is where we're just popping in an equation. I try not to do this too much, but one over curvature is equal to the second derivative of my deflected shape with respect to X over one plus my derivative my first derivative with respect to x squared to uh, three halves. I'm sure you all remember that from calculus. I know I just have that one right off the bat. But we're going to assume Small deflections and so my slope is very small so my derivative of my deflected shape with respect to X is really close to zero and then if I square it it gets even smaller so that's just zero. We're going to ignore that. So my radius of curvature 
is equal to the second derivative of my shape. That means it's also equal to m over e. I'm back up here. So my angle or rotation is the, right. If I integrate it once, right? Kind of see where it's going. Maybe, maybe. These are the equations that you need to keep in mind. Okay? That's what all that derivation was. Okay, my elastic beam theory. How long have we been doing that? 32 minutes, we'll pause right there.